So for week one, the first week starting today, I have made a decision that I'm going to split one of these lectures up. So right now there's two lectures. One's the, the first one's the introduction to data curation. And the other one is data management and its application to the data curation life cycles. Uh, I'm going to split this one up. So it's just data management, part one, and then the th which makes it um, lecture number two. And then data curation life cycles, I think I'm going to put in a separate unit or a lecture because it's just um, I need to focus more on the life cycle approach to data management, namely the OASIS model, which is what this class is based off of. And this is because of changes with grant funders such as the NIH. Uh, in 2023, the National Institute of Health is going to require uh, all people, all researchers seeking grant funding to submit a data management plan. So that, I think, in 2023 is going to change the way that data curators, such as yourselves or information professionals, a session collections into their repository. So there are numerous life cycle approaches that I talk about for data curation, but the one I like the most is the OASIS reference data model. And it's because I'm most familiar with it and it makes sense to me. Uh, let's go to that. So. In the course, you're going to be seeing that I talk about researchers a lot. The researcher. Well, if the researcher decides to do this or that. Um, I could have used any term um, as long as it uh, dealt with somebody that was the producer of information. So when we, let me bring up, all right, this OASIS reference model is what we review in depth in week five. And I was going over my notes for week five, and I want to bring up why I talk about this. So the producer of information, we have to start somewhere in the data reference model, right? So the researcher as the example is the example that I use in this class for the producer of information. And we're talking about ingesting or collecting data from the producer, i.e. the researcher. Now what's going on is that at this point, uh, the curator, whoever that is, it's usually somebody in the administration side, is trying to determine if the data should be brought into the repository in the first place. There are many factors that go into this, which we talk about in week five. But be, the change is that with the National Institute of Health, for example, is that now that they're requiring uh, preservation planning on the part of the producer to have a data management plan representing this entire cycle, before they even submit a grant for consideration, um, I, I really think that the term, the determination on the curator to assess if that uh, data should be brought into the repository is going to take place before the producer even approaches the repository in the first place for uh, data management. In other words, this entire planning process will take place at the forefront for anybody that's any researcher that wants to submit or producer of information that wants to submit their data to a repository for preservation and reuse by a potential consumer. Um, so I don't know what this is going to look like in the future, but that's my guess. Now that um, in 2023, we have different standards being applied upon the producer uh, for the preservation of their data. Now, so when you look at this course, the researcher is the producer. Um, and you are part of, as information professionals, you are the management for this entire process. This entire process deals with somebody producing data 
and preserving that data for, for reuse by a third party consumer. So when you're thinking about data curation, your potential job outlook uh, in the future, you think of these, um, these right in here, uh, one of these four entities as being you. Somebody's going to be in charge of um, ingesting the information and making sure that it's ready for archival data or archival preservation or preservation within an archive. That's why this line is here. There are certain processes that need to take place, which we discussed in week five, week five uh, before information can be ingested into the system. Then somebody is in charge of archival storage. There's a data curator in charge of data management. And uh, then there's somebody that's in charge of dealing with the, with the public in terms of making sure that information is accessible for a third party consumer. So data curators at um, somewhere within this process. Oh yeah, and then there's administrators. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six different entities which data curators could be part of. So then the other thing, all right, so this is the model that this class focuses on. The one other thing that I want you to be aware of is the, oh yeah, backtrack. The fact that the OAI reference, uh, data reference model is an ISO standard is important. Uh, it's an international standard for organization reference number 14721. Because this is an ISO standard is the reason why we're using it in this class. It's verified and this model is used on an international level. Uh, so think of each of these six different entities as when you're given the list of like things that uh, like the function of preser plan preservation planning does or the function of archival storage or the function of um, ingest. Those are hands on Think of the list I give you in terms of what they do as hands-on activities that you're going to do, be doing as a data curator working in a repository as it relates to any one of these six functions, all right? Now, when you're thinking about data curation, we're not talking about the preservation of, of um, the preservation of uh, published material. We're talking about bits and bytes, binary code um binary code that's not broken so here's an example i'm putting in week five um what do i mean all right when we see binary code when we see this um all right so all data is produced in bits or information over the web which is in which is preserved in the formats of zeros and ones if there is a piece of this code broken like what's shown here in red um, zero one zero that codes broken that means that the data is not going to be renderable for a third-party resource uh, when we run something like an MD5 checksum analysis which is just computer software that checks for broken code if this string of number numbers comes out on the other end of the checksum is broken that means the data is broken and it's it can't be rendered for um, archival purposes for uh, use by third parties. So when we're talking about data curation, we're talking about the preservation of the bits of the binary code of data, um, which exists at the metadata level, all right? Uh, so that's what you're doing here. And all right, so I hope that this is helpful. So for week one, when you are going through the presentations, think about data curation from that perspective. The preservation of bits or the binary code to make sure that data is harvestable and preserved for third, third party access. All right, so I am going to stop here and um, finish this lecture here with my overview um, with um, video. And then I'm going to break this lecture up into two different lectures. It's 46 slides long, so I'd better. 
Uh, part one will be the data management, and then part two will be the data curation life cycles with the understanding that we're reviewing, I'm reviewing three or four different life cycles in this first week, but uh, pay particular attention to the OIS reference model because it's what this class is based on. And anytime you see researcher um, in the narrative, assume that that's any producer of information. And that the term researcher is used as a way into uh, the OAIS reference model. Another way to look at this is um, a repository or look at this, the gray box is an archive. And these are all the different functions that go into managing the data within this archive. Um, I think that's it. Um, yes. All right. So that's it. So then as you're going through the weeks, I produce for you information that you need to know in terms of big chunks about the different terms or jargon and things that happen within these four different domains here. And uh, then we put it all together in week five at the end of the at the end of the summer session. All right. So thanks for your time. And I will talk to you later and um yeah